Hey guys, my name is KJ OS, and if you're new here, this is where I talk about tech to help people make informed decisions. And today we're going to be looking at the best productivity apps for the iPad. And in this case, we're going to be looking at the 2020 iPad Air as I use this on a daily basis. So when I'm not using this, I'm mostly using my laptop. And to be fair, I kind of can't go a day without this because when I'm not using my laptop, I'm using this. So let's just call this my secondary primary computer. Anyway, the apps on this iPad for one are something I have been using now for about a year or two. I'm not really sure, but I'll be using it for a long time. And they change from time to time. So if you, I'll be updating you guys, and if you want to see something like that, consider subscribing to the channel. So without taking too much of your time, let's get this party started. Starting off this beautiful list, this is literally the first thing I open when I wake up from bed, and it's called Tick Tick. So basically, I'm a very forgetful person, and it kind of sucks, don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to find my way around it. But in that period, Tick Tick serves as my to-do list of my reminders and my task management app. And one of the best things about Tick Tick, it has like a seamless cloud synchronization. So I can use it across all platforms from the Pixel to my iPhone to, the com to my laptop and of course my iPad. I use it as my daily reminder for tasks that need to be done or even to plan ahead. And it is very simple to use. Now, all you need to do for the first one is to put in a task, say, shoot YouTube video by 7 p.m. tomorrow, and it automatically syncs that day into your calendar. You can also add an attachment to your to-do list if you need to, and you can also give it a priority level. Everything in Android is pretty high in demand, so most of my tasks each day require a very high priority. It has a promo feature that gives 25 minutes to focus on a particular task, and it also adds a white noise in the background if that is your thing. Tick Tick has come in clutch for me more times than I can count because of my nature, and I highly, highly recommend this app for anybody watching this video because it will definitely not let you down. Moving on to my next productivity app, we have Mojo. Now, if you're a content creator or a YouTuber of any kind, you should definitely have Mojo on your phone because Mojo gives a person the power to animate photos, videos, create stylized text, and input that on anything you want at any time. It is basically a cheat code if you do not want to learn Adobe After Effects because let's be honest, it takes a couple of hours to practice that and master it, and not everybody wants to do that. So Mojo by and large makes it easier for content creators to animate their content however they want. It has an array of different themes and templates to choose from. And if you unlock the pro version, you can also customize the size with the platform you want to post on, like Instagram stories, posts, reels, tweets, and even TikToks. Mojo is easily one of the best purchase decisions I have made since the beginning of the year. And apart from using these in my YouTube videos, I also use this for my external jobs with clients and others that need help. The free version is very limiting, so I highly recommend you get the pro version to, you know, <laughs> wild out. There's a famous saying that your best ideas come to you when you're on the toilet or in the shower. But unfortunately for me, they come to me when I'm driving and I space out. So I have to park very quickly, and I mean very quickly, bring up my phone and open Google Keep and write down my video idea. Now, I'm not even trying to exaggerate, but Google Keep is the most important app I have on my iPad. Now, I have been using this since 2017, and I don't think I have found a suitable substitute. Now, starting out my YouTube career, I had all my notes here. I even color-coded them and pinned them to the top of the screen, so it's the first thing I saw when I opened it. It also has cloud synchronization, so you can access your files on any platform of your choice. So that makes switching from a smaller screen like your phone to a bigger one like your laptop or your iPad. Google Keep has a few neat features that I really like, and if you're taking longer notes, it doubles as a notepad if you have the Apple Pencil. You can also apply grids to the page to guide your writing. You can also take notes through its Speak Now feature and transcribe in real time, then play it back to yourself anytime you want. It's very similar to the recorder app on the Pixel, but without the search feature. Next up on my list, we have Spotify. Now, if you know me, you already know how much music plays into my everyday life. Now, this is a productivity tool because as much as writing, shooting, and editing can be fun, it can get very annoying very, very quickly, and that also depends on what's going on around you. So music just comes into play as something that buffers that and makes just shooting fun. So basically, when I finish this video and start shooting my B-rolls, I'm going to be blasting music all around you, and I wish you guys could listen to what I listen to. I, don't, I can't play right now because I don't want to get demonetized. So. Spotify is my music streaming platform of choice because it was the first one I started using in 2014, so it already has all my playlists. But apart from that, it has evolved and added features that makes me want to keep coming back. The user interface is easy to understand without overwhelming you, and yes, I'm looking at you Apple Music. One of the best features of Spotify is the integration with the platforms you're connected to. You can start playing music on your speakers and use any device that's connected to your account to control the music. A feature no other music streaming platform has, at least the last time I checked. And now that it's fully in Nigeria, we can stop using VPNs to get them to work and just download them from the App Store or the Play Store. 
Also, I'll be comparing music streaming platforms very soon. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing to the channel. Next up on this list, we have Canva. Now, Canva is a web and mobile application that allows anybody to design anything of their choice, ranging from thumbnails, making pitch documents, editing videos, creating effects on a particular photo that they want, and so, so many others. Now, I use Canva for two things. One, to create pitch documents for potential clients because I'm a consultant on the side, and to create thumbnails for videos that I do on a daily basis and anytime I want to do them. I have always said PowerPoints or even Google Slides are quite limited in their design simplicity. Canva gives thousands of presets of themes to choose from and they have created quite the portfolio that caters to everyone. When creating a pitch document, I can set for a particular thing I am looking for. So if I want to create some sort of social media marketing plan, it gives me an array of different templates to choose from. And of course, it also allows me to import other designs from different other templates. It's honestly a non-designer's dream. It has a function for collaboration with a team if there's a document that a lot of people need to work on. It also has a paid subscription for about 10 bucks, but the free plan already offers a lot of incentive to stay. Next up on my list, we have Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is just like every cloud-based platform that is out there, but this time it's a lot easier to share files, work on files, and also to collaborate on files that I uploaded. It gives you 15 gig storage units for free, but you can upgrade to 100 gig for less than a dollar here in Nigeria. 15 gig might look like a lot, but if you're using Google Photos and even Gmail, it will finish pretty quickly, so it's better to get 100 gig or even more if the need arises. Mostly all my files on my hard drive are backed up in my Google Drive, just in case I forget my hard drive at home. It's very convenient and access to my files is a lot easier. Number 7, we have Adobe Scan. Now, the era of having a bigger scanner in your office or in your home is dead. Now, don't get me wrong, they might still exist in our everyday life, but as years pass, these things become obsolete. For someone like me, I look at billions of documents physically every single day, and sometimes I need to scan and send it to another person. As opposed to using a scanner or even looking for one, Adobe Scanner automatically changes anything into a PDF document or a JPEG if you choose. It's fast, simple, and very convenient. You can edit pictures to your preference, removing any smudge or blemishes before saving or uploading. This has been a lifesaver for me, especially during this quarantine period. And if you handle a lot of physical documents, you might want to try Adobe Scan It'll change your life. Next up on my productivity list, we have DocuSign. Now, as the name implies, DocuSign is an application that just allows you to sign documents as quickly as you can. And the best part, it's free. After signing your documents, you can send your documents via email, Dropbox, Google Drive, and many more. You can also see real-time updates from when your document has been signed or hasn't been signed. You can also have multiple signers on one document if the need arises, and enable reminders as much as you can. Now, as a content creator or a YouTuber, DocuSign is very important to me because you just never know when that contract comes in or that sponsorship email comes in and you need to quickly sign it in due time. So you get your trusty Apple Pencil, get your iPad, sign it away, and you're good to go. This is honestly, or this has honestly been a very good app since I downloaded it, and I think that anybody that downloads this will benefit from it. Second to the last, we have Google Meets. Now, this is probably the best video calling software that is out there for hanging out with friends, doing business calls, and many, many more. Now, during the pandemic, they had the chance to capitalize on being number one, but they failed to do so. Nevertheless, this is a very great app to have. What I like about it the most is how easy it is to set up a call or a meeting without having to download anything. It is natively integrated into the Gmail app, so you can instantly start the meeting or generate a link to share. If that does not float your boat, you can also go to the website and do the same thing. It's fast, easy, and barely an inconvenience compared to the other apps like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and probably Skype that nobody uses. Another thing I like about Google Meet is how easy it is to share your screen with anybody that is on a call with you. The interface is great, it's easily navigated, and also the sound quality is something I really love. Now, if you're not using this already, I highly, highly recommend that you start doing it. It'll change your life. And last but certainly not the least, we have Google Docs. And I promise you guys, Google is not sponsoring this video. I just use a lot of their apps in my everyday life and it's making me more productive as time goes by. I use Google Docs for writing all my scripts. It's been with me since my first video and as I write the script to this one, you already know it's on Google Docs. It's cleaner than Microsoft Word, Evernote and even the native notes app on the iPad. Although there is a dark mode toggle on the iPad, I sort of prefer the white theme on PC. Maybe I'm just used to it, I don't know. On PC, you can have other Google apps open on the side of your Google Docs like Google Keep, your calendar, and your tasks without even switching applications or even switching tabs. Or on the iPad, you might need to split your screen into two and use the multitask feature. All in all, Google Docs is probably one of my favorite apps to write all my scripts. And going forward, I don't think I might switch. But if there is something that you guys think I should be using, just comment down below and let me know what it is. And these are my best productivity apps for the iPad in 2021. And from time to time, I think I'm going to try and switch it up because a lot of my friends say I should try apps like Notion, 
or task aid and see how they compare. So I'll be updating you guys on how that goes. But what do you guys think and what apps do you guys use? Comment below and let me know. Thank you guys for watching. My name is KJOS and I will catch you in the next one where we talk all things tech.